Now let's talk about vertical asymptotes. The definition of a vertical asymptote is that f of x approaches infinity, either positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter which, um, whenever x approaches c from the right or the left. And we say that this line, y equals c, is a vertical asymptote. Now the theory, one theory behind vertical asymptotes is if f and g are continuous and f of c does not equal zero, but g of c does equal zero, then c, x equals c, is a vertical asymptote. Basically, uh, you have to check when you have polynomials to make sure that nothing is going to cancel out. Let's look at some of these. Let's look at the vertical asymptotes for each graph. Um, f of x is 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Now, the numerator is never 0, so when does 2x plus 1 equal 0? And of course, that is when x equals negative 1. So this is the vertical asymptote for this function, and here is the graph, and lo and behold, that, as a matter of fact, is exactly what we see. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Let's come to this function. f of x is x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. Again, the numerator is never 0. And so I'm going to factor x squared minus 1 and say, hmm, where does that equal 0? Well, this is x minus 1, x plus 1. So I have two vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are at x equal negative 1 and x equal positive 1. And lo and behold, if I come down here to this graph, that is indeed what I see. Vertical asymptotes at x equal negative 1, x equal positive 1. It's hard to write at the bottom of my tablet. Sorry about that. Now for the last one, let's look at cotangent. Now, this doesn't look like it fits, but it does, because cotangent is really cosine over sine. Now, sine and cosine are never zero at the same point. So, whenever sine of x is zero, cosine of x will not be. As a matter of fact, it'll be one. So, where is sine of x zero? Well, sine of x is zero whenever x is equal to n where n is 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, dot, dot, dot. And lo and behold, that is what we see on our cotangent graph. Or this one even drew it in for us. Now let's look for all the vertical asymptotes of this graph. Hmm. Now, take a quick peek over here at the graph itself, and you're going to see that this one only has one vertical asymptote. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we're going to need to do some factoring here. The first thing you want to do is rewrite this. Okay, x squared plus 2x minus 8 can be factored into x plus 4 times x minus 2. And um, when I factor the denominator, this is x minus 2 x plus 2. Now, what happens to these two x minus 2's? They're going to go away. So I can rewrite this as x plus 4 divided by x plus 2. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 2. Now for this one, the limit is different whether you're coming in from the right or the left, and you still have a vertical asymptote. But what I want to show you is a way to do these when they're not quite so simple. What I want you to do is to factor this as much as you can. So we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, and when I factor this, it's going to be x, x minus 3, divided by x minus 1. Now this isn't going to simplify. 
but you can see I have three terms here. Now what I want you to do is kind of analyze this. As x approaches 1 from the negative, this term right here is positive because it's going to get very close to 1, but it, it's greater than 0. This term right here is negative because it's, even if it were 1, 1 minus 3, so this is negative. And this one right here, as x approaches 1 from the left, this number right here is going to be less than 1, so this term right here is negative. Now, let's go back to our pre-cal skills. I have two negatives and one positive. So this is positive infinity. Let's do the same thing for this one down here. Let's take it from the right. I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x, um, x minus 3, divided by x minus 1. Now I've got three terms. Now let me see what the signs are. As x approaches 1 from the right, this one's positive. This term right here will be negative again. And this term right here, let's see, from the right means it's greater than 1, so this term will be positive. So this whole thing becomes negative infinity.